started. All right, fantastic. Let's see who pops in first. William Brown is the first one in. There we go. Awesome, Philip, welcome. Byron, we were just talking about you, Byron. We saw uh, some information coming in on the on the registration, talking about you. Your ears are probably burning. How you doing, Jamie? Good. Yeah, hey, buddy, we'll get started. Kelly, how you doing? I'm great. All right, we'll get started in just a minute. Folks are coming in. Good to see everybody. So uh, for the folks that are coming in, let us know where you're coming in from. And we'll see who is the farthest away. That's that's we had somebody uh, a couple of briefings ago that was from Guam. So I don't know that we're going to get that far away with you guys, but I'm coming from Woodstock, Maryland. So the people that are uh, I'm going to type that in here. Hold on a second. If I could type right. Woodstock, Maryland, Cincinnati, Ohio, Oxford. Nice. So for those of you, if there's anybody from CMS pops in here i saw there was a couple of people that are actually registered from cms you might know woodstock maryland if you're coming from the howard county side down across and down that crazy hill we're we're out there if anybody oklahoma city fantastic san antonio love it so who's farthest so far i guess san antonio or oklahoma city which one would you say it's san antonio anyway well, welcome, everybody. Glad you decided to join us today. We will get started momentarily, I promise. EPA, San Francisco, Alan. Alan's got it so far in Region 9. Wow. That's right. How you doing, Alan? How are things out in San Francisco these days? Awesome. Good deal. All right, well, let me, uh, let me get this share the screen situation working the way it's supposed to. Let's make sure that's right. All right. Everybody got everybody seeing that? So we're in good shape. That's good. Fantastic. You never know with data sometimes and connectivity. Just saying. You never know. All right. We'll get cooking in just a minute and see if anybody else wants to chime in where they're coming from. All right. We love it. Love it. Love it. Welcome, everybody. We're glad you decided to join us today. Today, we'll be talking about data collection, compilation, communication, and reporting for project study management, where we'll be highlighting some things from, from EPA and USDA, right? Jamie Blackburn, Director of iAdvantage Software is here, as well as Kelly. How you doing, Jamie? Very good. Nice to see you. Good to see you. How, how you doing, Kelly? I'm great. Thanks to everybody for coming today. Yeah, so you have a little bit of experience with plant and animal agricultural scientists, apparently. That's fantastic. I'm Dave Lowe. I'm your GovBrief host today, and I want to welcome everybody that decided to join us. Like I said, we're going to be highlighting USDA and EPA today with, uh, with some, of the, some of the best practices that are in place for you, and we want to welcome folks from HHS BARDA. I saw that one come in. That's fantastic. We we uh, we hadn't seen anybody from there. That's a that's a research group that's under HHS, Jamie. So that's awesome. And the OIG for uh, for the for H for uh, USDA is here. I'm wondering is is Ms. Fong? I so you work with Ms. Fong's office. Uh, say hey to to Phyllis for me. I got introduced years ago um, from Hubie. Hubie Sparks, I got introduced to, to Phyllis years ago uh, from Siggy. So I appreciate you guys being here, as well as BIA and, and, and other folks, we stragglers that are coming in from different places. We This is primarily going out to USDA and EPA. So a lot of these folks are, are coming in from EPA. And the best briefing ever, Jamie and, and Kelly, if come from Jeff, it includes information at some point. Thing slightly lower than a technical expert. Can you do? Can you hit that bandwidth, Kelly slightly. and Jamie? Can, can you try slightly that? Slightly lower. Slightly lower. We're not sure exactly what the measurement is, Jeff, but we'll do our best. <laughs> Philip, it addresses surveys over time and space. This is a that is changing emissions. Okay, we. I don't know if we'll get into exactly the changing emissions, but I'll bet you we talk about surveys a little bit, won't we, Jamie? That's right. <laughs> And uh, if I learn how to maintain data integrity, Sarah, that's important. You have to do that. Uh, and and here, here you go. Kelly, here it is. Amina says, if any of it's relatable, so you get anything, 
So there you go. And Charlemar, devised data and survey result results and survey tools. We will be talking about that for sure, right, Jamie? Absolutely. And Deborah, the EPA studies performed pertain to FIFRA. What is that? Anybody know about that? Yes, we know all about FIFRA. <laughs> all right. Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act. We are very familiar with it. Wow. That is a mouthful. I'm glad somebody knows about that, but that's fantastic. Deborah, we'll be talking about, will any of the, the case studies involve that, Kelly? Absolutely, we can. All right. That. Well, we got you covered there, uh, Deborah. And by, uh, Bryford, the outcome of the briefing has a positive impact on our EPA fleet data. Hopefully that, that is the case. And Mar Market, is that how you would say that? I'm sorry if I messed that up. Uh, roles of contracting officer in the process. Okay, we'd love to talk about that. Jennifer, I come away knowing how to collect data with no errors, zero errors. Can you do that anymore? Can you do that? Is that possible, guys? We can get them as close as any any other data collection system, yes. All right, we'll talk about that. Barbara, you have some basic descriptions of terms and concept if needed for those who didn't, are not fully up to speed. Hopefully we do that, Barbara. If we're not, Smack us over the head so we, we go back to basics and make sure we get, get you what you need for that. We don't want to get too, too high level, right? It's slightly below technical. Slightly below. <laughs> slightly below. I, and so please address this, and we'll get back to these uh, as we go. Isa, how could research management centers provide effective reporting or research performance for the organization? Great question. Hopefully we address some of that, right, uh, right Kelly? Yep. Yep, yep. And Janie is saying data integrity discussion. She shouts this out. It's very important. Data integrity discussion present takeaways I can use. All right, there you go. Lisa, how, how is R&D data different from other data categories and data management quality and necessity for cleansing? Great question. Great I'm cool. not sure if we we'll di dive too much into that. Will we talk about that, Jamie? We do in, the, in, the, uh, in how we approach this whole problem. All righty. And Tatiana say, I like to have redundancy. So that if someone messes up a file, it never happens, does it? No, nobody ever messes up a file. There's a backup. Do you have a best practice suggestions for that, Jamie? Absolutely. And, all right. Fantastic. Aaron, what will data as what data assets use USDA already have the other agencies to access? I don't know the answer to that. I'm not sure we'll answer all those. But um, we if we don't answer that, Aaron, tell us what you really want from that, and we'll see what we can do. And Jeff says, what? Recommended strategies for ensuring data integrity, another in data integrity uh, and accessibility as systems and requirements evolve in the future. Great, great question, right? To, yep. to do that. Awesome. Perfect. Well, fantastic. We will do our best to answer those, won't we, Jamie and Kelly? Absolutely. And, we'll, and we'll, so I'll come back to those when we start getting to the questions, uh, but everybody can ask questions. We'll talk about how to do that in a minute. Real quick, session agenda, we'll get through the briefing controls and who, who these folks are, why, why they're here talking about USDA and EPA studies. And um, we're talking about big data challenges, the framework, I think we're talking, that's what you said, Jamie, a lot of this has to do with the framework, right? Right. So, and then choosing the platform using scientific methodology. That's one of the, one of the things we're introducing here is the use of scientific methodology, as well as maximizing the data flexibility and integrity so that you can use the data, right? It's not about the data, it's what you can do right. with it. We'll get to your Q&A throughout this, feel free to ask, and recommended action steps, and we'll make sure you have additional resources and procurement options. In the session docs, Terry, if you can pop them in for us, you have the briefing presentation so everybody can access that, as well as iAdvantage capabilities so that you can see what they're about. If you've been living under a rock and you have no idea how Zoom works, you can go up top there and you, you can pick things. You can make us bigger, smaller, choose the view you like. If you want to just see one person or all of us, you can do all that too. So, and that is all part of that, um, the briefing controls up top. If you would like to participate, you can chat, you can raise your hand, you can do the Q&A. If you have real Q&A type things, let's pop those in the Q&A. But if you'd like to dialogue, absolutely love the dialogue. And if you want to keep this behind the scenes, send it to info at iAdvantageSoftware.com if you have a particular question that you don't want everybody else to see. That's how we do it. And a real quick disclaimer so that everybody here can participate legally. So this is not a, endorsed by any agency like GSA or any other agency. All the participation by you in this briefing is voluntary and you don't have to 
deal with having to purchase from anybody. You're not, it's not a commitment or endorsement to purchase from any vendor, including iAdvantage. So there you're all off the hook. That's what GSA and inspectors general's offices like too. So there you go. Now you can actually participate in this poll. And the poll happens to be, why in the world did you come here today? Are you in management and want your data to work? I'm in an R&D and I have a current data collection need. I'm tired of scrubbing bad data. Everybody's probably, you can pick as many as you want, by the way. Uh, I'm in procurement and want to know about iAdvantage or my boss made me come. I knew somebody was going to answer that question, Jamie. Knew they were. My boss right, made while me they're come. Answer, while they're <laughs> answering that, what's that? My boss made me come. I guarantee you. <laughs> So did mine. Um, so, uh, so real quick, let's talk a little bit about iAdvantage. We know you were founded in, in 2003. Uh, tell we us were. about your place down there sure. in, in Cary. So we were founded in 03 out of an agriculture science background. Our founders are scientists. They found us out of necessity. They found us to start providing more efficiency and efficacy to producing, in the end, great data. So we've been around for, for 30 plus years actually doing the most important things here in Cary, North Carolina, where I can hear the rain on the roof today, by the way. I don't know if it's yes. raining wherever you guys are at, but it's raining and raining hard. But for 30 years, we've been capturing it, we've been managing it and reporting it for important places like the USDA and EPA for big sponsors. And we are small business and we're part of the GSA schedule. And that is something we're, we're part of what we're doing today. Fantastic. And so, and a lot of what we, what you've done, I mean, the impetus from you guys was, was doing reporting on behalf of these companies to EPA and USDA. Is that what I remember? That's right. Doing both what they call safety and efficacy tests. And the thing to note about that is it's really important. You can't make a mistake for later to fix. In other words, you collect the data, you manage the data, then you report on it. You can't go back and say, oh, we should have asked them that. that that's right. So we and we'll talk a little bit about some of the flexibility, I think, on on that on the front. end. Absolutely. Yep. So so why what is happening from your perspective? What's happening sure. with the federal so agencies? The pain we're hearing everywhere is the same sort of pain that not only in our industry, all industries are feeling, which is we're, we're producing, as it says here, four filing cabinets of data every 15 minutes. That's before it was backed up. That's before things were made from it and and practices have to be looked at it and governed on it. That's almost 463 exabytes. Exabytes, I can just tell you, is a lot of data, right? A good gigabyte will fill up a pickup truck. This, this has created a huge management issue, right? So you have all this data. It's like we're drinking from a fire hose. There's tons of things that can happen with this data if we're not careful and we're not pragmatic and we didn't design it and plan for it and so forth. So you can have falsification just to make things right. You can have summation, derivation type issues to the manipulation. You can have, uh, well, you can have tons of reliability of data issues because people will summarize and resummarize. And sometimes we don't know where the origination was, what they call data provenance. It's really important because you end up with what they call data integrity gaps. You have questions between 10 years ago, five years ago, and today. It's tricky to convert them into valuable insights when you have these data gaps because you can't just make it up. You have to make sure you have the data source, what they call the one truth. It's really critical that whenever you think you need data for something, you have a way to prove its truth. Growing data for use in business intelligence will not scale. In other words, if you're now feeling overwhelmed, you will feel more overwhelmed because we're <laughs> not stopping. And the review and access needed by all stakeholders is important. Everyone needs to be able to look at the data as it occurs, as it comes in. So if there is an ability to change or to fix or to resolve or to ask maybe a second question, there's a way to do it. These are what all agencies are feeling. These are what all industries are feeling. Everyone's in the same boat. And I'm sure a lot of you folks would probably say the same. Yep. In fact, we're going to find out, and this, this is fascinating, guys. You're going to love this because as, as we ask th these questions, how do you currently collect data? Watch what happens here. We've seen this happen before. It's okay. Pa these are painless, by the way, and they're, the objective is just to make sure we're on, on the right course. There it is. Spreadsheet is going to, it's probably going to be the number one way. 
of, of how they do that. I'm not going to try to influence in any way, but you can pick whatever ones that apply to you and we will see how that works. Uh, I love the fact that a lot of folks are using survey tools. That's great. Yeah. And uh, paper forms, that still happens, doesn't it, guys? Still sure does. Happens. Still happens. And sure so does. while we're doing that, um, set us up for, for what you mean by the true value of sure. data. So, so before you start, you, you, if you have a project, and we're way at the beginning, right? Right now, a lot of folks here are dealing with massive amounts of data and having to get access. We saw some of the questions earlier. But really, you have to start at the very beginning is before you even ask your first question or request your first bit of day, you got to start saying, what are the things that I want, right? So you have to be responsible. In other words, do you like getting a survey from someone you don't understand why they want to know? Right. Some people are very they volunteer right away. Some people don't know what the purpose is, so they tell what they want to say. So you have to always be that responsible per person for that request. And the, the initial values are very critical and expensive. It's expensive to collect data in science. We can collect data about a scientific experiment and cost as much as 50 to 150 thousand dollars. If at the end we forgot to ask the right questions or collect the right things. Yep. That makes Mistakes a lot and work. data analysis can be expensive at the back. You can't always make up for everything, although there are amazing things that are going to happen with artificial intelligence and such. You still have to start at this point. So this is kind of the mantra you want people to say before they even start. Yep. Call and I think you mentioned, truth. you mentioned something that and I think it goes to just the fundamentals is that the better the, the better the collection is on the front end, the better the outcomes on the back, right? Absolutely. And, and so... I think based on your um, poll, it's a good time to just say that if you're using paper currently, just keep listening or <laughs> spreadsheets because we've been there. Yep. Let me share that. Let me share that poll so that people can see um, <clears throat> exactly what we were talking about. Right. So, so 19 out of 23 still using spreadsheets, although some of those folks are also using survey tools. So that's good. Right. Right. Or serve or, or contractors to do it, right? Fantastic. That, that's what you're talking about, right, Kelly? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. All right. So, so then forward. this this screen is really talking to the fact that so, so you have your your overall concept of what you're going to get to the big truth. Now you're going to talk about a strategy. So the first thing is you want to keep your your request data simple, right? The the oldest concept in the world is you really want to make sure you collect things in their source point. In other words, like an address, you really like to know their zip code and their street. And if it's west or east, you want to break it down as much as possible. Because data scientists are, are amazing how they can see re, kind of revelations from data if you do a good job in designing it up front. So you, you should sit down and design and consider with an expert. We don't do a design without expertise from the, from the business and the science side. We never have. Decide what to collect and how to protect it. So you're going to decide how you're going to keep it. And now with, with GDPR and all these new requirements, you got to know how you're going to keep everyone's data very well contained. And again, the provenance, where did it come from? Select a project study management platform. We like ours. But there's plenty of them out there. Some of you guys are using all different forms. We have found success, and that's what we're here talking about. And collect clean, verified data. There is no second try. Sometimes I don't think anything's worse, Dave, than when you get a survey and they say, oh, that survey wasn't the right one. Can you answer this as well? And you answer it's, it the second time. It's funny you say that because Deborah Ortiz just said to everybody, sometimes as a Fed, uh, the jargon used makes it challenging to understand what we want from the public and for the public to sometimes for us too. So it, it's, it's developing the right communication and having the tools work the way that you want. That's what it sounds like, right, Deborah? It sounds like, hey, we, sometimes we need an interpreter, interpreter just to know right. what the heck we're talking about here, right? And, and Dave, I don't want to uh, mess up our presentation or Jake steal Jamie's thunder, but I would just say to Deborah that... Uh, you know, that is part of what we have learned long term from the process itself. You got to start somewhere. And when you have your data in electronic format, it often helps you to identify how to improve in the next iteration. Yep, yep. 
And I, I think that's that that's the case for everybody, right? Right tools, right language. That's what that's what Deborah says. I, I couldn't I couldn't agree more. And and it, it it isn't necessarily just tied to a singular tool, but you something's got to drive the bus, right, Jamie? That's right. That's right. So so I've listed some best practices. There's actually, oh, I don't even want to try to li limit the, the amount of data administration best practice I've learned over the years. But <laughs> you can see here, there's some basic things. You design and define the categories of data, right? We, one of the things we do is we can almost vision it, but then when it comes to writing it all down, it only ends up three or four. A good designer will help you get through that even further. Ensure all data is entered in the same format. If you have someone using acronyms or shorting address for ADDR, whatever it may be, it will mess you up and not even mess you up, it'll mess up your data scientists trying to take that data and combine it with a million other points. That, that never happens, Jamie. It'll never yeah, happen to the yeah. federal government. I can tell you that, right, right, Deborah? Never happens. And, and use closed-ended responses. This is really important because we've all seen the other and others will, will, will drive yes. you insane at times. <laughs> Numeric codes versus character strings. It's always great if you can get that people understand one, two, three, sometimes if it helps to pick out from which one it is. And that's why we sometimes in science, we rate things one to 10 and things like that. If any data is unknown, research the best method. There's been people talking about this. There's data scientists who have written long papers about how you collect data and how people rationalize what the right answer is for themselves. If a data science will be analyzed collected data, please focus on the raw data. They don't like things collected in big strings where they have to break them apart. And then I'm gonna, I say here, consider metadata, and we'll talk about that in a second. But metadata is something we'll hear more and more about. And then the final one, of course, is test, test, test. It's real easy at, when you're done, right? The last thing you're asking someone for, for information, and you're gonna ask a lot of people, it's really easy to think, yeah, I've got it, and then walk away and then find that you weren't even close when 50 people tell you how they would answer it. So, so, so true. So I talked a little bit about metadata. I just want to say, look and ask it more and more. So metadata is data about data. So if something is described, and especially if it's acronym based or if it's somehow um, in, in the science world, we have like medical kind of references. Well, this is a great way to describe what you meant to collect and where it's, where it's at. And there's lots of tool growth into this area and in, including even to the point where now there's a kind of a, a new standard called FAIR which means that you know, nothing's worse than having data from another source that you can't figure out what they wanted. So you have to talk to the person who originally came up. Data scientists, I don't, I don't wanna say everyone is, but there's a lot of introverts out there and they like information and they like to read the manual. So give them information of where to find this data. They're going to be much better and faster and quicker. And um, this is a great setup. Dimitri uh, says, the most expensive thing you can do with data is not use it. Ooh, that That's is, right. sounds like Dimitri, you might have had that happen in your yeah. organization somewhere along the line. I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe you set me up for this poll really good, which is we asked about how you collect it. Now let's talk about how you manage it. Manage it, is it from paper or notebook? Come on, if you're doing it on paper, it has to be done there. Multiple choice, by the way, you can choose as many as you want. Sort query from a database, import and, and massage it in Excel. We know that's happening because you're using spreadsheets. You already told us. <laughs> and custom data management software or third-party contractor performance for me. Ah, or other. There's your other one, there's your other one, Jamie. Absolutely. Set, there's set always another. Other. Others are the So Dave guy, did a right? terrible job thinking what you would answer and had that. that but so uh so. And this is, th this is just your fundamental basic surveys on here. So you mentioned scientific methodology throughout this. So set us up for what that means for, for folks and how they can apply this. Sure. Obviously, EPA and USDA got a bunch of scientists, right? Absolutely. And, and, and you, there's much more than you probably ever see. They're hardworking right now. And the first thing is you got to start within that design phase to find the problem and the data requirement you think will meet that problem. The, the thing about this is, if you know, it's very linear. It's not like, well, if I forget about something, I get added in. No, we really want to spend the time defining the problem, the requirement of data that will meet that, then design the process to answer the problem. Paper and Excel work. The question is how well they work in time. 
And that's where people start needing different grades of responding. And that's why this presentation is about good best practices. But the scientific methodology, if you follow through, will ensure that you don't end up with a, a glitch at the end. You manage the process of data collection. And then finally, you manage, you review, communicate, and hopefully learn something so the next one is that much better. And that goes back to, to what Kelly was talking about. It's Kelly giving a smackdown for everybody. Come on, answer this. <laughs> yeah. Love it. <laughs> so anyway, you got, you got about another five seconds to answer this poll before Kelly starts really getting getting abusive to people. <laughs> Three, two, one. There you go. All right. We, we don't force anybody to do anything. But I do think this is interesting, right? So if we share this out. Sort and query from database, right? That's up there as well as in export to Excel to massage it because you have to be able to use the data as Dimitri is talking about. It. If you don't, at least use it, right? That's right. Love it. Appreciate that, guys. And we'll we'll make sure we, uh, let's see, come, uh, let's, <laughs> I won't report it to management. I love that, Kelly. That's terrible. <laughs> All right. But a platform, a so, platform with flexibility. Tell us about what kind of sure, flexibility so they should be looking for. So there's a lot of things going on in the, in the world of how you manage your data and how you manage your collections and such. And so one of the things, you know, if you're creating an RFI, if you're out there trying to say, hey, I'd like to find out who out there can help me with what I'm trying to do. Um, these are the things you should look for. It should be web-based. It should be out there in the cloud, if uh, we hope, like we are. Um, you should also worry about data provenance. You should always be able to find the root source and in our case, we look at things like audit logs and such, because there's times you want to know everything about everyone entering data in all the way through. You need that kind of compliance thing. And that's why we say current uses cover a wide array uh, of these type tools where they cover from biology all the way through chemistry. Love it. Love it. And, and talking about that platform, you mentioned cloud-based. Sure. Or... So, so that was a big move for us, and that's a big move for everyone. They're all getting there which is a cloud-based platform. Even, I don't know how many people who use Excel have used the cloud-based version on Microsoft, but the fact is it offers lots of opportunity to do things uh, cheaper, better, faster, right? So 100% web-based architecture is a good start. Scalable means it can handle the five people you need data from or the 50,000 on a Monday morning at 9 a.m. You gotta be able to handle both of those. It allows for data exchange and integration. That means there's times when you have some older systems maybe that need to do something or get data from or look up to and things. So you have to have a platform that can allow you those type things. In our case, because of science background and such, and because of who we're talking to, we feel like compliancy is a constant driver of how we do things mm -hmm. to do it correctly and do it right. Immediate access of results for stakeholders just means that as they're collecting it, if you are collecting that Monday morning, 9 a.m. data, I promise you, your boss will ask you at 9.15, how's it going? <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool to bring them up a dashboard, right? And it's quickly easy to customize to fit your science. We find that we've actually covered quite a gamut, have been asked this question for years. Does our methodology, does our software cover this? And we think a platform should do so. Yep, I, I agree with that. And it's interesting you mentioned about the exchange of inform information and integration, because a lot of, the, from what I understand, you were collecting data that had that had to be distributed to USDA in one format and EPA in another format, right? That's correct. Yeah. So that that's part of that. That's part of making sure that the the collection also has the ability to to be transformed to what they want to see. So so design design collect report and repeat. That's right. Sounds like, sounds like a shampoo, man. It does, yeah. Wash, <laughs> rinse, repeat. But yeah, that's it. really important. And then each time you can keep going. And we have lots of practical ways to integrate what I would call, uh, you know, the second year. Because remember, a lot of our studies and such are yearly. And so the second year, you might want to add something. Well, you have to keep the integrity of the science at all times. Yep, yep. So let's talk about design and that. Sure. So designing is when you, your, your boss or, or you just got the idea to do something. So you really want to keep it up so that collecting the data is not painful. Um, you could still keep what I would call the creativity of certain things in there uh, as you're going through this design, as the people you know you're designing it for. Um, it, as I said, our platform was designed for scientists by scientists. That's how we came about. It was necessity. Um, 
quickly create studies along with all the supporting study information talks about all the things you can do. But also guess what after a while you do some repetitive work you want that available, you want to say I want to do it like I did on that particular collection. Security of data protection is absolutely it's not just security, as you can imagine, our sponsors do not want to share data amongst themselves. And if they do share it, they want to, what they call federated. By the way, that's the hot new word for sharing data, federated data. Federated. Um, which is great. And, and if you do want to do that, then in, in turn, that is a choice. That is not just because it's available and can be gotten. So, lo love so you that. start off with design. We move on to collecting. Well, collection is where the, you know, the rubber hits the road. You want everything to be the same all the time. You want it to be able to happen anywhere. Right now, there are thousands of people entering data in, in even other parts of the world into our system. You want both online and offline. You can't have network everywhere you go. That's fine. So we have to offer both of those. You also want them to make sure that they have compliancy. So for instance, if they change something, even from before when they entered it, they have to say, I changed it. And we make a record of that change. So later on, a data scientist can say, well, it looks like they changed this two days later. What happened? And they can see that record. You want APIs, uh, programming interfaces. This is the ability to do things with the data that aren't intended originally. So the data has to be used. I saw that a lot of people export to Excel. We all know what a CSV file. I don't even think I have to say that. <laughs> I think it's comma separated values. Um, most people just know them as CSV. I just know it. And so you have to be able to import and export and so forth. So that collection is going to require you to be able to, if you're picking a product, allow you to import things like pictures and such like that. Because sometimes that's relevant now or maybe uh, geolocations. Yeah. So you have to be able to do all those things. And, and yeah, the flexibility. Jamie, I, Go ahead, sorry. I just wanted to chime in and say that as you talk about multiple geographies and so forth with EPA, we know we have people on from across the United States. And this, uh, this is something that we're very um, in tune with how to handle. And particularly when you get into environmental and agricultural type um, descriptions of similar events, but very different wording or terms used. So we can talk about that more later. Yeah, absolutely. And then you get to a place where you want to do something with this, right, Jamie? That's right. So in the end, right, we all know we come to this. We have that Monday morning. We're 15 minutes into the collection. Our boss wants to know what's going on. <laughs> we have the type of reports that uh, are needed because they're requested by someone. Then we have the type of reports that are compliance type and are used each time. And we always know they're included. Well, whatever platform you have, you want to make sure that this is all feasible. And there, you know, there's also the report that, you know, literally you get tapped on the shoulder and say, how do I know? Well, these are all type of things you should be able to get to. You have to be proficient and be able to do these and we help you along in our product, but at the same time, this is something you should expect of every report. If you have the data, you should be able to report on the data, how it's collected, when it's collected, and, and so forth, and even, even who did it. So does that mean that you have, what you're talking about is, is while the data is being collected, you have the ability to see the what and how it's being responded to? Is that immediately? How, what is that? Almost like? immediately. If they're offline and then when they hook up to a, uh, a service and they're able to send it at finally, that's when we start getting it. If they're right. online, it's almost immediately as they upload it. So as they're taking it, entering it in on a notebook, on an mm -hmm. iPad, th th we're collecting it at the root. And not only that, it's usable by your data science type people who are doing reporting or maybe taking the data and putting it elsewhere. All right. Very good. So so who, who wants to take this one? This is kind of the, the flow diagram of things on the, the left and the reporting on the right. Who's taking, is this you, Kelly? Oh, yes. Unfortunately, they're going to have to listen to me for a while now. <laughs> no, we are, um, we have a long history of working in multi-site studies, we call them, where there is often uh, a biology site, which could be a, uh, animal uh, laboratory, it could be a, a field site, it could be a greenhouse. We, we then work with uh, samples that go to analytical processing 
or uh, residue chemistry type labs and potentially gene expression or protein expression labs. We have to be responsible for tracking samples. So we have a tremendous history of understanding how complex this data can be and just the, honestly, the supply chain management of where things came from, where they went, and the data associated with each of the processes therein. And, and at the end of the study and, and perhaps during the study, we're also sending reports to agencies like EPA or USDA. We continuously work with the Quality Assurance Unit uh, so that there's a GLP assurance so our QA can access the data at any time. Um, we might be sending USDA APHIS reports based on data and definitely uh, FIFRA uh, reports that go for the registration of new products to EPA and to prove safety therein. So we have a long track record of using our platform for managing this type of data movement. Now, it's typically not across agencies, but it's from different sources through the platform and then out to different end users. And we can manipulate the, um, manipulate's not a good word in GLP, but <laughs> we can design the correct reports so that each different entity gets the information that they need. Um, we talked earlier about language governance and uh, about the right language being so important. And that's one of the big things that we learned early on in handling data and making sure that it was gonna be long-term sustainable is that we can very tightly um, control what the end user has the ability to choose as answers or input in the majority of the fields if that's what the um, user want, or excuse me, the end need is. So we know how to help people design the right ways to collect the data so that when it's reported and when it's used again in the future, you have high quality data that does not require a lot of cleaning or scrubbing or, or um, uh, additional work to use it. We use the same concepts for governing, governing numerical values that go in. So that if you have a request for GPS coordinates, they are always entered using the same format. Mm. Dates use the same format so that you don't have that problem within your um, data as well. And then in terms of geographies, as I said before, uh, there's the opportunity to make sure that you are using terms that fit the people who are inputting the data, whether that be at, at a lab or at a biological um, field site uh, or for sample tracking needs. So this system has a lot of history and experience built into it, no matter what kind of data you're collecting. So one of the things that, that you've done in the past is large, either, you know, the, 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 the folks that are supplying uh, pesticides, that's one of the things, fifth, the, is that what the fifth thing? Correct, yes. So can you give us an example of how that works? Um, I don't want to get too much into, into the weeds, Ooh. Uh, but <laughs> uh, is, it, is it possible that you can give us an example of what the requirement was on, on for EPA and or e USDA and then the collection process for that? Absolutely. Um, we have worked on, I think the best thing would probably be to tell you about a combination type study where there is a, a regulated trait involved in a crop as well as uh, regulated uh, pesticides, be that herbicides, insecticides or whatever. Um, those, in order for those types of products to be deployed in the field across the United States, there are USDA APHIS requirements um, and EPA requirements that track where the applications will be, where the field locations will be, endangered species, and so forth. 
And that goes back to the biological sites. This system has been used to collect that type of data mm -hmm. that is side by side to the actual residue um, and compositional requirements and so forth that go to USDA and EPA. So they those types of projects involve all of what is listed for the biology sites and the analytical labs and so forth here on the input side. They also all are involved on the output side because in addition to what we um, provide in terms of registration reports and um, and stewardship tracking type port reports to USDA and EPA, ad hoc reports might include what goes back to the client. Uh, it also may include QA reports. And all of this is an interactive system where we can give access to that type of data all along the time that it's being collected uh, for anybody involved in the process. So the biology sites and the chemistry sites and sample tracking, anybody can be accessing it if they've been given the right permission. And so, and so when the information goes to EPA, if, one of the biggest challenges for any federal agency, we'll use EPA as an example. So EPA gets the report. If it's not, if the information isn't either in the right form or not detailed properly, it can get rejected. What's, what kind of impact is that if they don't get the information they need the way they want it? It's huge because it could mean the delay of an entire year of that product being available for use in the agricultural right. production community. Right, because if you miss it by a week and, the, and, and you miss the planning, then you're done, right? That's correct. That's huge. The, the same thing with uh, providing the information that's required on the front end. Um, if, the, if the required permits are not in place due to a data gap when it's submitted, you can miss that entire season as well because you didn't get the right information to those agencies ahead of time when those studies are planned. Um, I think I also failed to say something that's important in terms of the fact that one of the beauties of this system is that you can take all that same raw data, but you can export it in reports that are specific to the need of the, the end user that that report is going to without having to manually manipulate that data. We have a, uh, a robust reporting system that allows us to um, pre-design the report, but pull the data directly out of the system, which also means there's less need for QC and less need, less chance of errors. Awesome. And I do see a couple of questions coming in and comments, and we'll get to those in just a minute. I think one, and we, we have been diving down in, that was very specific. Sorry. And quite frankly, Kelly, I didn't understand half the things you were talking about because I'm not a scientist, I don't, but I think it's awesome because <laughs> there's a whole bunch of people that got everything that you just said. <laughs> that is awesome. But the, so when you think about the scientific methodology that, that, that the, if you're using the, the methodology, whether you're using e-study or not, let's take that out and just talk about the methodology that can be done not just in EPA or for use in EPA and USDA. That can be that can be used in, in, in any agency, right? Is that am I right with that? Yes, absolutely. So and this, here, yeah, go ahead. Explain yeah, this one. slide really does not mean necessarily that um, we are crossing agencies as much as the fact that we could take data uh, from different places, different types of data, and so forth and use our platform to collect it. Uh, we already do that in many ways, as I showed in the previous slide. Uh, if you have weather data and geological data and environmental data, medical data is no different than analytical data for, for our ag study. Basically, we can take any type of data and put it through the system um, and then be able to report that data out. And it all goes back to that good design and data governance on the beginning when you set the platform up for whatever it is that you plan to collect and report out. And that has been historically one of the things that has set us apart from a lot of other softwares. And it's because we knew, because we were 
managing the beginning, the middle, and the end, how important that process is in making sure you have high quality data. I mean, and there's nothing like doing it for decades, right? That's and the right. fact that, and you very specialized to meet the, those requirements in EPA and U, USDA. And I'm sure anybody that's, that's here from EPA and USDA, you have probably seen outputs, right? From, from this, most likely. I got a, I have a couple of questions that we're going to get to right now, but first, let's let's say if you would like to continue the conversation, um, let because one of the things is let we can talk about specifically within your region, like you were saying, Kelly, talk about within the region, talk about it wherever you want to, right? So you can do that. We have from Kento. It says after applying the scientific methodology, I think the challenge in in the federal government to improve best practices of managing data is to automate data collection, data quality management integrity, data reporting, et cetera. For examples, macros, third-party service programming, et cetera. Would you, I can't imagine that you could say it any better than that, Jamie and Kelly. That was well said. That was very well said. <laughs> you are on the money, Kento. Uh, Albert, uh, we use large enterprise systems designed for the collection, management, storage, and processing our data and large systems to make the availability of data easier. That's fantastic, Albert. That's that's exactly what you, you want to be doing, right? Right. Um, Marion was looking out for you, Ke uh, Kelly. I saw you respond and Kelly had something to say. <laughs> and she's like, hey, guys, stop talking. That's what that that's what Marion was saying. Yeah, she thought Jamie was going to bulldoze me. I'm glad somebody's <laughs> never, looking at me. Never, ever. Won't Not going to happen. <laughs> Not going to happen. All right. So let's see. We got a couple of questions here. Uh, hey, Dave, says, can I that? ask Albert if he, I mean, as far as large enterprise systems, um, Jamie, do you get, you understand the full uh, aspects of that question in terms of what Albert is saying? I, I just think he's basically sure saying what they do. It. I think it's, he's saying how they do it, which is yeah. using other large systems. I don't know if he's, and Albert, if you want to if you want to expand upon that, we can unmute you and you can you can lay out what you got what you're doing there for sure. Um, and so Alan's asking, it appears that eStudy platform, that's your platform, right? It's called eStudy. Yep. All right. Uh, so eStudy platform is a cloud-based database with additional associated applications for data analysis and reporting. I would say you got that right. Is that right, so Jamie? So absolutely for reporting. So we actually don't try to tell customers how to use data analysis um, because they're quite good at it using all the various packages like from SAS or R and I can go on Tableau and, and all those products. So oftentimes we have found that uh, when it comes to taking the data and applying it to their business, you know, they want the correct data, which we help them get, but they want to take it and mix and match it the way they want. It just so happens we're really good at the reporting aspect for our agencies. Yep. And he goes on to say, uh, we also collect images and video in addition to tabular type data, grain size, chemistry, man, ben benthic community. That, that is definitely in. We in even know what that is, Dave. Woo! <laughs> man, oh man, that's getting down there, Alan. I think you found somebody that you guys can do the Vulcan mind meld with <laughs> after this. So, um, yeah, so definitely, definitely continue the conversation. I'm sure they, they love to talk um, with you about that. Um, I want to say one more thing, though, about what Jamie just said in terms of uh, statistics or analysis that part of the reporting that's nice is that that data can be reported out, so to speak, in a format to go directly into a statistical analysis or some other type of system, which makes that really easy to do. Yeah, love it. Awesome. Well, and we're going to close this poll with two questions. I love it. We'll, we'll make sure that you get you get uh, the conversations that you need. And that way we can keep yeah. on rolling to the key takeaways. Now, you, your, your platform was, was built to take advantage of all the scientific methodologies, no matter what you want people to, to use the benefits of scientific methodologies, whether it's yours or anybody else, right? That's right. That's right. I think it's just a good practice. And to tell you the truth, it should be almost like a, I don't want to say a mantra, but it should be something to remind yourself 
that whenever you start saying, I need to get data, we, instead of just shooting off whatever method you use, you stop and you, you think about what you want to collect and how they're going to perceive it. And you go through a design process. And, and let me just offer this up. We're happy to sit down and, and listen and talk to you about this, yeah. um, no matter what you use. So yes, yep. it was. we feel like this is a good way to do it. It's a very pragmatic way to ensure that you have less mistakes or no mistakes. Then of course, there's good design equals good data. You know, We want that data not to live today. It's expensive. It needs to live for a long time. And the guy five years from now should be able to reference it if needed. And then of course, scaling bad data is not the way. So we're already we know that's true. There's amazing amounts of data. It's crazy. Let's stop the insanity and start at the beginning and start using a good method. Yep. And and that's that's the real big thing. And and as, as we mentioned earlier, you're not under obligation to buy from anybody. But if you do want to buy from iAdvantage, you can because you are you're a small business. You have a GSA contract. If you need a partner to run it through, I'm sure you'll be able to figure that out too, right? Absolutely. So so yeah, we. We just want to make sure that you, the agencies get what they need. Love the dialogue with everybody. You will get a recap email um, early next week with a finalized thing. You'll probably get a recap today, as a matter of fact, with what happened here. But we kind of package it a little bit differently here at GovBrief and send it out to everybody. So everybody has access to the presentation. Um, you get a link to the video and you can have those one-on-one -on -one meetings. There's a bunch of folks that were talking about that. And, and looking for that in the future from, from you guys to talk, continue the conversation. That's a real big Absolutely. deal. And Absolutely. how much does it cost to continue the conversation with you, Jamie? It, that's, a, that's a big zero. Nothing. nothing. It's nothing. That's right. We love, that's right. We love having those conversations. We learn so much as well. So we love those conversations to hear what's going on. That's right. And we do appreciate you guys. Jamie, great job. Kelly, rock star. Who gets a rock star status? Definitely. Definitely, yeah, Jamie. That, definitely. Um, I will, I'll say this. Uh, let me go back to, we've got a couple of questions. If you got to jump, you guys can jump. There's a couple of questions we're going to answer. Albert says, we're the Census Bureau, so it's essential that our systems are designed to manage multi-mode collection of data. Very important, right, Jamie? That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You got to be able to get it from wherever you can get it. And currently wherever. we have too much of a gap between the collection, the assessment completion processing. We need to get a more Concurrent assessment capability, our big product is taking in data related to over 300 million persons. Wow. And, and is critically required for the Constitution. Makes it pretty important, doesn't it, if it's constitutional? I, yes. So that's about as important as you get, Albert. It's a it lot, is. sometimes a little more important than whether or not- 300 can, million. 300 million, that's a, that's a crazy number. We know, obviously, we all filled it out ourselves. <laughs> And yes, we did use different methodologies to get it. So we can appreciate your pain. So awesome. Um, let me see. There was another, is there another? That was okay. Um, I do want to say also, Albert, that we have lots of experience from years ago going, and even current customers going from paper into our system. So we know how to move something from a paper collection method to a to an online system. You and better darn sight know that. Successful with it. <laughs> What did you say, Dave? I said you better darn sight know that because there's a lot of people still doing it, even if they don't want to admit it here. Absolutely. Just saying. Um, and Kento has one more. Is is the eStudy play platform able to connect to a database server and schedule reporting at a certain frequency, for example, daily, weekly, monthly, et cetera? Yes. Yep. There you go. That's easy. Answer that one live, too. So that, that's good. If, we, if you don't have any more questions, let us know. You can always reach out. Kento, you are very much welcome. And uh, you can reach out to these, these, these folks and schedule time. Um, and Bryford, absolutely, you're going to get that and the video link so that you can share it with your team. And that's exactly what the, the objective is. Share it around. See, see, what, uh, see what other information you need. And then if it makes sense to engage, do it. If it doesn't, don't. It's as simple as that, right, Jamie? Doesn't get any more simple. Yeah. Right? Thank you awesome, so much guys. to everybody. What's that? Thank you so much. Absolutely. We do Absolutely. appreciate you guys joining us. What you said you got there, Kelly? I said, yes, thanks so much. It's yeah, been we, great. We appreciate the participation too. Absolutely. Awesome. Great job, Kelly. Rockstar status. Doesn't, doesn't everybody agree? Kelly's just <laughs> killing it. How cool is it to hear a scientist talk about getting down literally in, in, in the in there. I love it. That was awesome. I really appreciate the insight on that. 
And Marianne, I, I need you now. They're really just picking on me for not liking being online on video. Oh, <laughs> uh, but you talk. So Jamie was talking about that earlier. There's different types, right? And it is awesome. You did great. I mean, yeah. awesome. Thanks, Dave. Awesome. All right, Jamie, got any last statements? Nope. Thank you, everybody. All right. Appreciate you guys. Stay in touch. See you.